showed in us since the judge is my defense i'm going free right when the gavel fell i heard the freedom bell ring through the heart of hell i'm going free i'm going Great to be together. If you would, why don't you turn around to somebody, say good morning, welcome them here to church. Good morning. Okay, Pastor Roy said social time's over, so I'm just kidding. Um, it is great to be together. Just a couple of quick reminders. Uh, we do have stations for communion up front, and want to encourage you anytime during the service this morning to feel free to come up and make that part of your worship experience. We also have an area for prayer in the back. And if you're feeling like you just really need to sit down and pray with somebody, we have a wonderful prayer team that would love to sit down and pray with you or pray for you about anything specifically. Uh, this morning, as we continue, we just want to um, experience the joy that God gives us. It's a beautiful day, not just on the outside, but my prayer is that in here, that his presence will fill this place as we worship him. Oh God, you 
As we continue, I want to encourage us to focus our hearts on the incredible hope that God gives us. Life can be very challenging. I know how much I need Him. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours for. Christ, my living hope. Sing it out. A hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. Praise the Lord. 
began to breathe of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on sing that again declare it then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body God, that your presence is here. God, that as we are in your presence, that we would experience you. That whatever circumstances we're walking through, God, that we can experience your peace and your hope as we keep our eyes fixed on you, God. It is. 
our gracious Heavenly Father, how we want that to be our prayer this morning, that it is well with our souls. And God, for those here who are walking through valleys that are dealing with challenges and hard circumstances in their life, I pray that this prayer is something that we can aspire to even if we don't feel like we're in that place right at this moment. God, we turn all of our attention and our affection to you, giving you all of our praise, knowing that you are worthy and you alone are deserving of it. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name and everybody said, amen, amen and amen. Please be seated. Thank you so much, worship team. And I want to welcome you, especially if you happen to be brand new. Thank you for joining us here at LifePoint. My name is Roy Conover. I'm the executive pastor. I get the privilege of introducing our teacher for this morning. Uh, some of you know her, maybe some of you don't. Uh, her name is Tammy Clotten, and she has been with the church since 1998, one year after uh, the launch of the church happened. So she and Ron and her family have been here a long time. She has been part of the biblical counseling team with me since the beginning in 2003. We have been working side by side. And God has been using her, though, a long time before that because God placed this call on her life to be a pastor a long time before that. She's been on our team officially since 2007. Uh, and if you were here in March, you got to hear us announce she'd has been the director of biblical counseling, but in March, we promoted her to care pastor, uh, and so she's been doing a fantastic job uh, over these last many months, and so it's my privilege to introduce to you this morning, sharing her favorite verses, Tammy Clotten. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> I love you guys. I've been praying for you so often. And I know that there's some of you in the room that you're like, you don't know me. How could you be praying for me? I still prayed for you this morning before you ever got here. And so um, I just want you to know that I really care about you. And I'm so thankful and grateful for the opportunity to be able to share one of my favorite passages with you. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but this morning when we were listening to that song, It Is Well, for me, I was having to check myself and say, is it well with my soul? And for the most part, yes. I can say that it is. And last service, those butterflies in my stomach were not cooperating with the it is well with my soul. <laughs> but this time it's a little more comfortable, so I'm appreciative of that. But you guys, you might not be in that same place that it is well. Maybe you're walking through something and it is stressful. It is really concerning. You're full of anxiety and worry. And that's okay. I think that you're in a room full of people and you're going to find out in just a moment that might feel the same way as you. And so there's times that we can get even stuck in anxiety. So I just want to ask, does anyone in this room ever get anxious or worried? Oh, a few of you. <laughs> yeah. And how many of you would say that you think anxiety is on the rise? Yeah, it really seems to be, doesn't it? We're hearing more and more about it. So I'm not sure if it was underreported before or if it's actually on the rise. And we are going to check that out. But first, I want you to see um, Bob Newhart has a little tip for us. And though, some of you may not know who that is, um, and that's okay. <laughs> He's one of the theologians of our time. <laughs> and he does have a tip for us. Um, and I know that I'm dating myself with this video, so that's okay. Um, but let's check out this video and see what he has to say for us. About the problem that you wish to address. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I have this fear of being buried alive in a box. <laughs> I just, I start thinking about being buried alive and I begin to panic. Has, has, has anyone ever, ever tried to, to bury you alive in a box? No, no, but truly thinking about it does make my life horrible. I mean, I can't go through tunnels or be in an elevator or in a house, anything boxy. <laughs> so what, what you're saying is you're, uh, you're claustrophobic. Uh, yes, yes, that's it. 
All right. Well, uh, let's go, Catherine. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, say two words to you right now. I, I want you to listen to them very, very carefully. Then I want you to take them out of the office with you and incorporate them in, into your life. Well, shall I uh, write them down? Well, it, if it makes you comfortable, it's just two words. Most, we find most people can, uh, can remember them. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yes. Okay, here, you're there. Stop it! <laughs> I'm sorry? Stop it! Stop it? Yes, S-T-O-P, new word, I-T. So, what are you saying? <laughs> you, you know, it's funny. I, I, I say two simple words, and I cannot tell you the amount of people who say exactly the same thing you're saying. I mean, this, you know, this is not Yiddish, Catherine. This is English. Stop it. So I should just stop it. There you go. I mean, you, you, you don't want to go through life being scared of being buried alive in a box, do you? I mean, that sounds, sounds frightening. <laughs> yes. Then stop it. I, I can't. I mean, it's been with me no, since no, childhood. No, no, no. No, we, we, we don't go there. Just, just stop. <laughs> Don't you wish it was that easy? <laughs> Maybe for some of you it actually is that easy. But there's a whole bunch of us that maybe it's not that easy. So do you think it's unrealistic for us to think that maybe we could just stop it sometimes? Maybe it is, um, but maybe it's not. We're going to check that out a bit and see. You guys were actually right. Diagnosable anxiety is on the rise. But guess what? It hasn't taken God by surprise. It really, it hasn't. He addressed it almost 2,000 years ago when he spoke to Paul in Philippians, and Paul wrote it down for us, and we're going to check that out. But first, I want to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. So there are some studies that show that in the 80s, now I know some of you weren't even born yet, um, but that's okay. They still did research back then. Um, there was 4% of diagnosable anxiety maladies. Today, there's reports of 50% or more. So you guys were right. Anxiety is on the rise. Maybe it was underreported. We don't know. Or maybe there was other factors. Today, we live in a really connected society. We have all, all the social media, and everybody's trying to keep up, and it's really hard to keep up with everything and stay connected with all that we want to stay connected with. There is such a wide spectrum of anxiety or worry. Words that we use, we fret, we worry, we're anxious, we're stressed. All of those are words that we use to describe how we're feeling in those moments. But that spectrum goes from nervousness, that butterflies in your stomach, clear to panic disorders with panic attacks and everything like that. And so we are talking about that wide spectrum. And I want to make sure that you know that it is not my intent today to put a Band-Aid on those really serious um, panic attacks and stuff like that, okay? That's not my goal. But I do believe that there's truth in these scriptures that God wants to speak to us right in the middle of those times that we're feeling this way. So hang with me. Um, I did a Facebook poll. I wanted to hear from you guys, and I wanted your voices to be represented, and I just said, what are some of the common triggers? What are some of the common causes of anxiousness or worry? And here's some of the things that people said, and maybe you can relate. Conflict, things being out of my control, family circumstances, schedules, illnesses, work, finances, unpredictable emotions, not feeling good enough, comparison, and crowds, just like we're experiencing today. The list goes on and on and on, but that was just capturing some of what we get anxious and worried about. 
The next question that I asked is, when you're in that place, what does it feel like? Please describe it for us. And so I am going to share with you a few responses that I think captured the majority of what was being said. It's not an exhaustive list, but it just captures the majority. So here's some things. Stomach drops, heart beats fast, I feel like my chest is tightening and negative thoughts creep in. I start thinking defeatist thoughts. The next one, for me, it's similar to when I'm running long distance and I start to feel too tired to keep running. Pulse is high, chest feels heavy and tight, but the worst part is my mind. It gets hyper-focused on the issue, causing my anxiety to be hard to deal with. And it even makes the physical stress more intense. More intense. And here's one from a guy. He says, I lose focus on everything around me. I get consumed with how I'm going to survive my certain embarrassment. I start breathing rapidly and can't concentrate. My pulse rate goes up. It usually happens around my lack of communication skills. Can any of you relate to that? Does it kind of sound like we captured? Yeah? So I can relate to some of those things as well. Um, and this morning, I get the privilege of sharing one of my favorite verses, which, by the way, is really hard to do to narrow down to just one. Um, but nonetheless, I did it. And I'm going to share from Philippians 4, 6 through 9. And it talks about what to do when we have anxious thoughts or worries and how to address it as it comes up. Let's look at the first part of this passage in the Bible. So you can look on the screen, or maybe if you brought your Bible with you, or you version, um, you can look there. And we're going to read this together, um, not out loud, but I'll read it for us. Let's look at it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need, and thank Him for what He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which passes anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So was Paul talking about just stop it? I'm not sure that's quite what he was saying. He is talking about things that we can do and not do when we're feeling that way. One of the things that we traditionally do is we start thinking and worrying about, how's that going to work? What if this happens? What if that happens? What will I do if that happens? And we start getting stressed, and the anxiety starts to rise. So that's called ruminating. We get stuck and hyper-focused. You heard that in one of the passages there. So I think that Paul is talking about a shift that needs to happen in the midst of that, right in the middle of that. So one of the things that Paul suggests when we're feeling that way, and by the way, I just want to say, it's not saying never be anxious, it's actually saying we're going to get anxious. You saw all around the room how many people get that way, right? And it, there's no sin involved in being anxious. That means you're human. He knew it was a human condition, and he wanted to address that. One of the things that we can do in the midst of that is talk to God about it. And I mean all of it. Talk to him about every detail of it. That passage is really saying, talk to him until you begin to feel peace. Not those quick shoot up a prayer, like, God, you know what's going on. Please, just give me peace. He's saying, I want to know the nitty gritty of it. What are your fears? What are your concerns? What are your what ifs? I want to hear about that. All of it. So it when you guys have been in that place before, have you ever gone to a trusted friend or a family member and you say, man, I am stressed. I've got all this going on. I'm freaked out. I have this worry. I have this concern. And as you're talking to them, you can feel your physical body begin to calm. 
Have any of you ever felt that? Yeah? That's what God is talking about here. He's saying, talk to me until that physical, your physical body begins to calm. And my peace will flood you right in the middle of it. The way that we know we can trust him is in Scripture, in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's truth. He cares for you. So bring it to him. And right in the middle of it, find things to be thankful for. Now you're saying, okay, when I'm in one of those situations and I am really anxious, nervous, and upset, I can't think of anything to be thankful for. Are you saying I'm supposed to be thankful for that thing that's going on? Nope, that's not what I'm saying. I am saying there are things that we can be thankful for. So look for those as well. Over the last several weeks, I have been walking through and helping make some big decisions which were weighing on my heart. And I've had to put this into practice myself. I don't tend to be a natural worrier, but I certainly do tend towards being a fixer. And so for me, I started thinking, how can I fix this? How can I help with this? How can I make this better? What if this happens? What if that happens? And I found myself in this very place. And I was saying, God, I can't sleep. I'm having a hard time. I'm tossing and turning one night. And I just cannot sleep because I am stressed out about this. My heart is heavy and I'm anxious. So what I choose to do sometimes when I'm in that place is go out into my living room, it was the middle of the night, and I knelt down um, at my couch. And for me, that's helpful, because it says, there's someone bigger than me. And I'm acknowledging that there's someone bigger than me that can help me with this. And so I knelt down and I just said, God, here it is. These are all the things I'm concerned about. This is what I'm fearful of. This is what I'm anxious about. I can't sleep. You know that. I know that you're way bigger. I know that you can help me figure this out. And he was like, no, I'm not going to help you figure it out. It's way bigger than you. I've got this. So in that moment, you guys, it was just like he went, shh, I've got this. And that peace, that past understanding, flooded my heart. I honestly started getting sleepy as soon as that happened. So I said, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to go back to bed and see if that helps. And sure enough, I went back to bed and it was helpful. I slept for the rest of the night. So that, I think, is what he's challenging us to. In in these moments, I love pulling out uh, the paraphrase from... Eugene Peterson in the message. I'm going to read that to you because I think it's really helpful. Um, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns, just like that night. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ disappears displaces worry at the center of your life. And that's exactly what I experienced. He displaced that worry with his peace. I want you guys to experience that. Have you guys ever experienced that before? Yeah. Isn't that such a wonderful feeling? And if you haven't experienced that before, and you're doubting that that's possible, today I'm just asking that you lean in and you check it out, and you see if maybe there's some helpful tools here for the next time you're in that place. The next part of this passage, I think that he's asking us to do something with our worry, with our concerns, besides just talking to him. So what is that? Let's check it out in Scripture, and we'll look at the next part of it. And it says... 
Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thought on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and praiseworthy. Keep putting it into practice. All you learned and everything you received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. So he is saying, keep praying until you feel that peace. And the God of peace will be with you. Put these things into practice. Now, I want to know, how often do we need to do this? Is it okay to just do it in the morning? And at night? I don't know about you guys, but I'd like to hear a little bit of feedback from you. Is there time? How often do you guys have to do this? All day. day. Anybody else? No? Okay. So I'm going to say every single time that you find yourself anxious, and don't wait until it's full-blown. And I get it, you guys. I'm not saying those of you who struggle with panic um, disorders, Sometimes it sneaks up on you, and it's there in an instant. I get that part. So I'm, I'm not saying this is a Band-Aid. I am saying there's some helpful tools in the midst of this to even dial that anxiety back. But please, get that extra support that you need if that's your situation. Put it into practice. What are we putting into practice? Stop it. Talk to God about everything, every detail. Refocus. Refocus on what's true. That night, I had to refocus on what is true. I am small, and God is huge. That's the truth. And he cares about me. He cares about you. And he wants to help us when we're feeling that way. So that's what I'm supposed to to focus on, those, those things that are true. Now, there's times, you guys, that we can't do that on our own in the midst of that because it's just too big. So we actually need support from others. So that trusted friend that I was talking about, I'm hoping that you have some of those. I am saying reach out to them. Because sometimes we lose perspective. We can't think of things to be thankful for. We can't think of things that are true or lovely or admirable or praiseworthy. We can't. We're too stressed. We're too worried. We're too anxious. So all I'm saying is talk to them and say, hey, I can't see past this. Can you help me? What's true here? Because this is what I'm stuck on. This is what I'm ruminating on. One of the awesome things about God is that he, because he created us, he knows we're physical beings as well as spiritual beings. And he provided some practical help for us as well. We need to take care of our brains, you guys. Our brains are so important. And here's some practical things that we can do to take care of our brains. We can rest. We need rest. Have you ever found when you have a lack of sleep, that you get more stressed, more anxious, more worried. Same thing, water. Water is important for our bodies. Food. How many of you get hangry? (laughs) Yeah? (laughs) Food is really important. If, If we don't get the right kind of food, we can really get amped up much easier. Exercise. You guys, exercise is so important. I'm going to give you a little tip. Do you know that when we get anxious, adrenaline floods our bodies? And that adrenaline does not reabsorb back into your body. It actually has to be spent. And so exercise is key to that. Whatever it is for you, I don't care if it's going for a walk, running, going up and down stairs, scrubbing your house till it's clean, I don't know. Whatever it is for you, 
Use some form of exercise to get that adrenaline out of your body so it's not wreaking havoc as you go. One of the other things is breathe. Breathe deep, you guys. Because when we're anxious, it really is true we breathe shallow. Our brains are not getting enough oxygen to be able to think clearly. We need to breathe. Take those deep breaths. And then one last thing. If you need medication, please take your medication. There is no shame in that. Everybody's body is wired different, and we all need different things to help us. And if you need that extra support, do that. One of the other things that's critical is that we take care of our souls. And we've been talking about that this whole time, right? So we talk to God about all of it. We talk to that trusted friend getting that perspective. And then what can we be thankful for? What are some of those things? I just want you to think about that just for a moment in your mind. What is something that you could be thankful for in the circumstances that you're walking through right now? Just take a minute and think about that. That night that I was describing to you, I'm thankful that I have a God who cares for me and who cares for you. I am so thankful that he is way bigger than me and I am not in control. The other thing, you guys, is refocus. Refocus on those truths. Our brains are powerful. Would you agree with that? But I just want to say they're not all powerful. <laughs> we, we tell ourselves stories anytime we get in these situations. Stories that sometimes are not quite helpful to us. We could start going, well, nobody else cares about this, so I need to care about this. I, nobody else is fixing this, so I need to fix this. Whatever the case is, you start telling yourself stories, right? Well, we need to monitor those stories because those stories affect how we feel. They really do. One of the passages of scriptures that I use, and I actually put it in the very bottom of your notes, is 2 Corinthians 10, 5, and it talks about taking those thoughts captive. So those runaway trains, those thoughts that we can't always stop right away, Take those captive and say, no, what is the truth here? What do I need to focus on instead? So you guys, honestly, just keep the next time that you're faced with one of these situations, I want you to think, stop it. Even if you have to think of Bob Newhart, okay? <laughs> stop it. Talk to God about absolutely everything because he cares about you. Refocus. Find those things to be thankful for. Stop it early. Don't let it get too far down the tracks. Reach out for that help. It's critical. We don't always think clearly. So I want us um, to grab a hold of these truths. The next time that we are walking through any kind of situation that we're tempted to be anxious about, they're critical to your health, to your peace, knowing that God wants to flood you with a peace that passes all your understanding. Your circumstances may not change. Not right then and there, but how you feel about them can change radically if you lean into this truth. I know there's challenges in it, but honestly, you guys, I have experienced the peace. I know many of you in this room have experienced that peace. Maybe you can talk to somebody else even before you leave today, and like, have you ever felt that way? Have you used that? How has it worked for you? And start talking about it. Make it a conversation. This morning, I want to pray for us. 
I want to pray that we can grab a hold of this truth because it's critical. Okay? So let's bow our heads and I'm going to pray for us. God, thank you so much that you care about us, that you want to hear these truths. You want to hear everything that we're walking through. You want to hear our fears, our concerns. God, you want to hear the things that are stressing us out. You want to displace our worry, our stress, our anxiety with your peace. For those of us in this room, those in the room that are doubting this, God, I pray that you would draw them near, that you would help them to experience you, that they would get a taste of it so that moving forward, they will grab on to these practical tools that you have provided for us. God, the next time, even today, as we're walking through the day, would you just bring to our mind, stop it, don't go there. Talk to me. What is it that you're concerned about? Bring it to me. I want to hear it. I love you. I care about you. God, would you speak that to our hearts? Would you help us to see those things that we could be thankful for? Because sometimes we can't see those things. God, Could you honestly help us to think about the truth of the situation? The things that we could praise? The things that are excellent? Would you do that for us? And God, I'm asking for anyone in this room who has that high anxiety, those panic disorders, God, I pray that you would help them to reach out for the help and support that they need that you would minister deeply to them. God, I'm even asking for some of your healing here this morning. Would you touch their their brains where that is happening? Would you calm that? Would you whisper that, shh, I've got this. Lean into me. We're not talking about the Band-Aid but we're talking about your truth that can displace worry at the center of our lives so that we would be flooded with your peace. God, I'm thanking you right now that all across this room, people can lean into you and they can begin to talk to you. Thank you for being here and present with us this morning. We're trusting you to be bigger than us and in charge and in control. Amen. Amen. Well, you guys, it's been such a joy spending time with you this morning. And I pray that your week and um, your day, that you would be able to grab onto these truths and take them with you wherever you go and whatever situation you're in. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next week.